Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 37 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Lindigam. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are talking about that in a report from PricewaterhouseCooper found that 52% of asset management CEOs believe that cloud computing will be strategically important to their organization, with multi-cloud strategies meaning greater flexibility and agility to respond to the fast pace of modern business needs and at lower costs. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three business tips for multi-cloud computing use. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is a great topic. I think that the uh, the whole banking industry is shifting toward cloud, and I think they're doing so in a multi-cloud way. And you got to start thinking about how that's done correctly. Yeah, absolutely true. And so, a nice opening question for this week's show is: What is the outlook for multi-cloud computing use within the Australian banking system, Dave? I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, in the article that uh, that we're citing here, it looks like the uh, regulatory. Um, requirements are being loosened a bit to accommodate cloud. You are doing the same thing in the states around HIPAA and even financial regulations and things like that. So Australia as a government is kind of being pragmatic about the fact they understand that IT is changing and that ultimately people are going to move assets into the public cloud, private cloud, and it could be many public clouds. And so ultimately this is about accommodating the needs of the bank, which is best for the consumer, which is best for the economy, you know, ipso facto, it just becomes a success story going forward. And also the, the, the great thing here is they're embracing multi-cloud, which seems to be the de facto best practice out there that's being used in the FinTech and banking world. And this seems to be uh, something that uh, is going to drive uh, the banks the banks in Australia toward cloud faster, just because of ease of choice, you know, economies of scale, things like that. So this is exciting news. Yeah, very exciting news. And you're right, you know, Australia does seem to embrace uh, technologies and multi-cloud should be a, have a good bit impact. I know we spoke to the CIO of NAB, which has a multi-cloud set up and, you know, there's lots of banks, I think, well, the four major banks anyway are adopting some form of multi-cloud uh, setup. So, I mean, there's lots of exciting things happening. You're right. So, I mean, Macquarie Bank is starting to explore multi-cloud options to underpin its retail bank environment. I think their experimental work is currently focused around the Google Cloud platform, you know, which is obviously looking around the price, uh, you know, scalability, uh, flexibility, technology matching the existing systems and platforms. So what are your thoughts on, and, and what example would you give, you know, based on your experience with the US and an, an example based in Australia? Well, I think this is a matter of, um, you know, typically mixing two, sometimes three clouds. And I think the reality is this comes down to best practices. And so if you look at the cloud providers out there and what they're able to do best, Obviously, Amazon is the 800-pound gorilla, and they have the most features and functions and cloud services in the space. But you know, Google can do a little better uh, in terms of some of the data stuff it has, and certainly the Kubernetes and the container-based systems. Microsoft has its own things that it does very well, specifically in the .NET environment. So we're getting to a point where people are just looking at this as really kind of a common platform. They're abstracting themselves away from the infrastructure. In essence, they're creating storage uh, really kind of as, as a commonality, uh, compute as a commonality, and then they're they're basically pointing to the APIs that they're gonna use to accommodate the needs. And that could be Google, Microsoft, Alibaba, uh, Amazon Web Services. And the banks, I think, are doing this for a good reason. I mean, they're gonna be end up spending, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year on cloud fees that are going to these larger public cloud providers. and. It's much easier, specifically if you're dealing with multiple utility services, and the best example we can think of is electricity. You know, data centers typically have two different electrical companies that they're assessing, and they're basically buying from the cheapest and the best available uh, provider of power. And I think we're having the same sort of thing that's occurring here. So they're doing their self to, number one, have best practices and uh, best of breed technology to leverage the technology that's gonna be most effective for them able to get that technology at the best price, able to pass that price down to the consumers, able to have the most flexibility and able to kind of protect themselves from the volatility that could occur in the cloud computing business going forward. So it's just a smart thing to do. And I think that the uh, banks are typically smart when it comes to technology, they're early adopters, they know how to use, leverage it correctly. Uh, and this is going to be, um, you know, just an instance of Australia kind of taking everything to the next level again. 
Yeah, you're right. And also, I think you you know, just want to add to that is that mitigating that risk, isn't it? That a lot of banks are, you know, that have had that legacy on-prem, you know, set up. And, and I know that some banks want to still keep that just because that's what they know. And it's best, sometimes the best of the devil you know. But e- equally, you know, it's that, it's that strategy, isn't it, of mitigating the risk with a multi-cloud setup, isn't it? Yeah, it's all about mitigating risk. And it's also all about leveraging the services that you need. I mean, if you go for a complete, pure, um, you know, 100% um, brand cloud strategy where you're going after a single cloud provider, that's going to have some limitations in, in the way and the price you're going to pay and the kind of services that are available. Uh, so we can actually take these services and have, you know, three different public cloud providers and, you know, we can have a thousand plus 700 plus 300 services that are available to us in the catalog. We're able to leverage as we need it. And we're also able to do least cost routing of the services. Storage is basically a commodity. We're able to leverage the storage systems. They're going to provide us with the best price performance. It's just a, a smart way to do it. I mean, if you think about it, if it was a, you know, no cost to you, you know, if you could use three different cloud providers, in essence, you had an automatic system that would, you know, uh, seek the cheapest bandwidth and the most efficient bandwidth at the particular day and go ahead and switch over to make that happen, you go ahead and do it. And I think the banks and the and the industry in general is making the move. And I think Australia is kind of out ahead of a lot of other countries, even as some aspects of the United States. And I think they see this as, a, as an opportunity. And I think they have to, just because of where they are, where they're located, points of presence in their space, things like that. They have to hedge their bets, and this is the way they do it. Yeah, it truly is. And, and again, I think one of the major things around, you know, moving to cloud or a multi-cloud or a hybrid cloud setup is there's always been the apprehension from, a, you know, the C-suites on, on a security level. And I think that's been a major bugbear for people to, to, you know, have that confidence to move over. So, you know, with regards to that, where do you see, you know, the cloud computing in the banking world? Do you think that banks will, now they have that belief in a multi-cloud setup, that the, the competitive nature and the, the heavy lifting can be done by the, the AWS, the Google, the, the Alibaba, the, you know, Microsoft? Microsoft, do you think they have more confidence we're going totally multi-cloud? Yeah, I think they will. I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't. I mean, um, you know, worst case, you can always go from three to one or three to two. Uh, and uh, that's certainly, uh, I think some people are going to do that uh, just because they're not using as many services in a particular brand. So they consolidate just for simplicity and perhaps, you know, working at a better price. But I think multi-cloud ultimately is going to be the end state of all this. Um, you know, private cloud still going to have an impact. We're going to have some hybrid clouds, which is a paired private and public cloud. Uh, but for the most part, the workloads are going to be on some public cloud someplace. And the public cloud is going to vary depending on the needs of the particular project that people are on. I mean, I'm on these things now, and I think that, you know, it really comes down to taking someone's requirements and backing the appropriate technology into those requirements. And if you don't do that properly, you're going to end up paying much more for the technology and much more for the transformation than you really should. And so your ability to kind of open up your mind for different kinds of brands of clouds, ability to leverage those best of breeds around your requirements you know, is really going to be the end state of this. It's going to be the success of, uh, of cloud for most of these organizations. So it's a step in the right direction. And we've been, you know, I've been writing and speaking about this for a long time. Uh, and now everything seems to be moving in this direction, not because I'm a genius, but, I, but it's just a pragmatic way to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say, it must be because you're some kind of genius. <laughs> Yeah, not quite. Yeah, come on, let's not be modest about this, David. It's because you're some kind of genius. Yeah, it's a, it seems like the uh, definition of my career is me uh, making proclamations, people uh, pushing back on those as being stupid, and then uh, uh, basically changing their mind in, t- in three years when it, kind of the market kind of shifts in that direction. But uh, hey, they all they all call and apologize, so it's okay. <laughs> Getting they don't. Fantastic. Well, it moves us on nicely to our final thoughts of the show and, and your top three tips for multi-cloud computing use within Australian banks. So, I mean, it's been a great show. So, look, what are your top three tips, Dave, for uh, cloud computing use? Yeah, the big success in, in uh, multi-cloud computing is going to be management. Uh, in other words, your ability to, in essence, in an operational fashion, make sure you're monitoring the clouds, the issues are getting taken, and specifically also with very complex multi-cloud situations. Some of these uh, solutions will be cross-cloud applications. And so they may leverage a database from Google, for example, and may leverage the compute system from Amazon, or a platform from Amazon, or, and even you know leverage Kubernetes on Google, and you know those sorts of things are just gonna be commonplace. So you have to have some sort of a mechanism in place to manage, monitor, and find root causes of systems very proactively in order for these things to run. If you neglect that, then this isn't going to work. you got to figure out this is a bit more complex. 
Therefore, it's going to take a bit more sophisticated management operational approach, and you need to think about that ahead of time. Keep orchestration in mind. This is all about the ability to orchestrate things in between cloud providers, including storage, compute, databases, things like that. And so your ability to kind of create meta processes above existing sub processes and leverage those effectively to automate business processes and processes between business processes is going to be a key thing coming forward. I know that sounds like a you know geeky thing where my you know propeller is spinning full speed, but you'll, you'll kind of get it when you get into it. The fact that we're building applications and we need to basically tie these things together in some way. And then finally, keep cloud ops in mind. I guess you can't stress that enough. So we have management of basically uh, monitoring and managing the systems, but you know, the, the poor guys who have to operate this thing going forward and basically play like whack-a-mole and solving issues, you know, have to be there. You have to have the playbooks in place. You have to have the training in place. You have to have the right personnel in place, the right tool sets in place. All these sorts of things need to be there. And there is an additional cost in all this. In leveraging a multi-cloud computing versus a single cloud computing, you just save the money in the fact that you're able to typically leverage these services much cheaper than if you're leveraging a single cloud solution. So good luck. Yeah, good luck with your processes, people. <laughs> I, think that you got, I think you've got your uh, your work cut out. But no, Dave, you know, they're great uh, top three tips there. I really appreciate that. And look, thanks for being a part of the Australia show this week. Always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. Uh, and also, you remember to click the notification bell so you are notified each week of the new releases that we have. Obviously, there's three shows and the news and other things happening as well coming up, which should be quite exciting. So thanks for watching. And also, oh, before I forget, Dave is on Twitter. So that's at David Linthicum. I'll put some blue graphics on the screen as well. Uh, and also, I'm on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching. And until next week.